Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my top 5 healing tips for Mist River Monk during Season 3 of Dragonflight in Mythic Plus. Starting straight away, the first tip is keep your ancient teachings buff all the time, which you can easily activate by your Jade Fire Stomp. And on top of that, make sure you're standing on top of your Jade Fire Stomp at all times. This is very important because if you fulfill those two conditions, any of your melee skills is going to be doing some kind of passive smart healing. Sometimes that means that you have to wait a little bit before dropping your Jade Fire Stomp because if the tank is gathering a huge pool, he might move the mobs outside of it and then if you don't get a fast reset, you have to wait for the cooldown. Also, keep in mind that if you walk out of your Jade Fire Stomp, the debuff persists for a few more seconds so you get the benefits even if you're not standing on top of it. And last but not least, what skills do you cast when you have these buffs? Well, that depends on the number of targets that you're attacking. Your Jade Fire Stomp makes your Blackout Kick cleave to 3 targets, so if you have that number of enemies or less, you wanna stick to your Rising Sun Kick Blackout Kick rotation, and if you have more targets, you wanna switch to Spinning Crane Kick. Number 2, track the stacks that you accumulated to your Blackout Kick to strike additional time. The maximum amount of stacks is 4, but keep in mind that pressing Tiger Palm on top of your Jade Fire Stomp adds 2 stacks. So pressing 2 Tiger Palms gets you to the maximum of 4 and then you can send out the Blackout Kick. This is going to maximize both your HPS and your DPS assuming you're not using Spinning Crane Kick of course. And also sending out a maximized Blackout Kick almost guarantees that your Rising Sun Kick will be reset if it's on cooldown. One of the recent changes to Mist River made it so that your Blackout Kick is going to light up on your frames if it's at maximum stacks, but you can check the description of this video for a weak aura that tracks it for you and displays the amount of stacks as well. I think that this is useful information as sometimes it's good to know that you're already at 2 stacks and pressing Tiger Palm is going to max out your Blackout Kick immediately. And speaking of weak auras, you can get one for the next tip as well from the description and that would be to track the stacks that make your next enveloping mist instant cast during your GG. Your Celestial Crane is a very powerful cooldown but it's even more powerful if during the window you're casting your instant enveloping mist because they trigger the enveloping bread healing which makes it even better. Along with the regular benefits that enveloping mist brings. And since you don't want to be get caught casting enveloping mist during your chiji window, having a weak aura to tell you when it's gonna be instant cast is actually very important. The next tip is about your thunder focus T usage as there's a lot to be covered here. Obviously the most useful tip is use this on cooldown every 30 seconds, but then the question is what do you use it in combination with? You can combine it with your Rising Sun Kick which is your hardest healing spell to reset its cooldown, but Blackout Kick already resets the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick almost every time, so that's kind of a waste. You can use it with Essence Font to cast it quicker and get haste, but Essence Font doesn't heal for a lot and that's a button that you don't want to be pressing much in N+. So from the rest of the options, actually Enveloping Mist is one of the best. It gives you crit which is good for both healing and DPS. It becomes instant and it brings additional healing value. So not only you can use it as an instant healing spell, but it's also going to increase the subsequent healing that your target receives. And to make things even better, you can cast Zen Pools immediately after on the same target, which will trigger your Echoing Reverberation talent making it strike twice if you cast it on a target with Enveloping Mist on them which is a pretty good combo overall both for damage and healing and it's quite good let's say in the start of the pulls when your tank is pulling. They'll get instant heal, increase subsequent healing and they'll definitely get topped up by the Zen pulls on them, doing a ton of damage in the process. A couple more tips here, you can achieve the same effect with Zen pulls if you cocoon your tank on pull or anybody else for that matter, as the cocoon also applies enveloping mist on them. And then back to the Thunder Focus T, don't forget that you can use it with your Expel Harm to get a huge shield and versatility buff, which could be quite useful if you know that you're getting hit by a huge mechanic. And lastly, a couple more general tips, but first, use your Mana T quite aggressively, as I end up standing at 20 stacks and not wasting them for quite a while in the dungeon, while they not only bring you back a lot of mana, but they also reduce the cost of your spells. If you utilize that skill correctly, you can go the whole dungeon without drinking. 
and you will get a lot of value out of it even if you just press it between pulls as the tank approaches the next pack. And the last bonus tip is for a skill that I'm not utilizing a lot myself, but it's your transcendence, which gives you the ability with a little setup to teleport around the battlefield. I'm not gonna go into detail, just think about it yourself, but there are a lot of cool techs using transcendence, which is going to make your gameplay much easier and avoid important boss mechanics completely. For example, all the bosses in Galakron's Fall have a mechanic that you can utilize Transcendence to make easier or dodge completely. So those are my tips, but do let me know in the comments below what are your tips for playing Mist River Monk during Season 3 and do check the description of this video for the weak cores that I mentioned earlier, a video explaining how to use them and a complete Mist River guide for Mythic Plus during Season 3. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video, until then bye bye, take care and get out of here.